Okay, good evening to all of you. Okay, welcome to our class today. Okay, and just to have a recap, okay, of what we were discussing at the class I met. Okay, we were discussing on cost of capital. Okay. This is when it comes to identification of cost of capital, okay, um, you have to determine, uh, of course, where the company is obtaining its money from, okay, so you have to determine uh, what, who are the different capital providers uh, who have financed this particular company, okay, so identify, get to know uh, who has been providing a company with capital, okay, uh, as per that timing, timing period, okay, when you are assessing uh, the cost of capital, okay. Once you've done that, you have been able to, ident to identify where the money came from or where the capital came from. The next phase is to determine uh, from each of those different providers of capital, uh, how much return do they expect to receive from uh, the company, okay, for their uh, capital investment, okay, that they have made in the company, okay. Don't forget, uh, every investor, okay, or every capital provider, okay, uh, he, he, it is an investment, okay, they have made the company. Therefore, it was enough, therefore, you quantify, okay, uh, how much time do each of those different capital providers expect to receive for their capital investment they have made the company, okay? Once you've done that, then, of course, you need to assess, determine uh, what is the market values, okay? What is the market value of all those different capital providers, okay? Get to know, okay? Um, in terms of... Uh, total dollars, okay, or total uh, capital the company received, has received, okay, from all those providers, how much has equity share given, okay, how much has uh, debt holders given, okay, how much of the total capital, okay, has the preference shareholders uh, given to the company, okay, so get to, to be able to quantify, to determine uh, the amount of capital the company has received uh, from each of those providers of capital, okay. And once you've done that, okay, the UA, okay, uh, to get therefore uh, the cost of the company, you simply can be weighing, okay, so you simply be comparing uh, what is the weight versus what is the cost of that particular provider of capital, okay. Therefore, in simple term, the average cost of capital is going to be equal to the weight of that capital source uh, times the cost, okay, uh, plus all the other different capital providers, okay. <clears throat> and just maybe to use my board here, okay, just first is to try to illustrate that point, okay. Because we need, we need it. Okay, we are going to be using it. Okay, we are saying that the first step that we need to do as a company, okay, the first step, of course, is when it comes to estimating uh, the company cost of capital. Okay, we say that the first step is to identify. Okay, identify. Okay, the capital source. Okay, get to know uh, the capital sources. Okay, get to know. Who is the one who provides the company with capital? Okay, so identify uh, from debt holders, equity shareholder, private shareholder. Okay, identify the other. There's a point of identification. Okay, getting to know uh, where the company obtained its money from. Okay, we will say the next step is to get the cost of capital. Okay, from each of the individual capital source. Okay, cost of capital uh, from each capital source. Okay. If the company is using equity, then get the cost of equity. If the company is using uh, private shares, then get the cost of private share. If the company is using debt, then get the cost of debt. Okay, once you've done that, okay, you can see our next step is, of course, to uh, determine the market values. Okay, determine the market weights. Okay, the market value weights. Market value weights, okay, from each of the source. Okay, for each of the capital source. Okay, so get the capital uh, market value of each of the capital source. Okay, then lastly, uh, determine the company with average cost of capital. Okay, and I've said that, for example, okay, if the company is financed by maybe just debt and equity, okay, um, if the company is purely financed by debt and equity, okay, this is an assumption, okay, and debt and equity only, okay, therefore, you can say the company cost of capital uh, will be equal to, okay, the weight of debt, okay, we multiply by the cost of debt plus the weight of equity times the cost of equity, okay, that's simply. So you're going to be getting the cost of capital uh, to the company, okay? <clears throat> I think that's fine. We also did uh, some example, okay, from uh, the, our notes, okay? Uh, so now I would want, as we go and check uh, questions, okay, that your examiner has tested, okay? That is from the question bank, okay? So if you refer to your question bank, okay, uh, I think in 
the November 2019 city, okay, uh, question uh, 1C, okay, the November 2019, question 1C, okay, so I would propose that you go through that question, okay, November 2016, okay, so November 2019, sorry, okay, question 1C, okay, so go through it, and then we discuss together, okay, so take uh, two minutes uh, to go through the question, then we attempt it together, okay. Okay, I suppose that you have gone through the question, okay, and you have been able to see how easy, okay, or hard the question can be, okay. So in this example, okay, we've been told that the company, okay, uh, if you go at the, if you look at the, ca the company capital structure, okay, the company has owned shares, it has debentures, and has present shares. So essentially, therefore, uh, we may need to estimate the cost of equity, we may need to estimate the cost of debt, and we may need to estimate the cost of preference share. Okay, so the first step is identifying. Okay, getting to know where the capital came from. Okay, where who has been financing the company. Uh, the next is to identify to get the cost from each one of those providers. Okay, so let me go to step number two. Okay, step one simply you've just identified you have equity, uh, debenture, and your preference share. Okay. Next is the cost of capital, okay? So cost of capital, okay, from each of the individual capital source, okay? So let me begin with A, cost of equity, okay? Cost of equity. And we say that at the cost of equity, when it comes to identifying the cost of equity, okay, we say that uh, it's well enough that you get to understand what of, which model, okay, should I be using, okay? Uh, because as we said, that we have two models, okay? We have two models uh, which we can use. We have the capital asset pricing model, and you have the dividend uh, valuation model. Okay? Now, based on the information, okay, that I have, if we go to the note number uh, three and four, okay, note three and four, and note three actually knew that the company earnings is six. In note four, the company pays six percent, okay, and they have a growth in dividend of seven percent per year. Okay, now from that information, uh, you can be able to tell, okay, which model you should be using. Okay, which in this case, in this context, okay, we should be using the dividend uh, valuation model. Okay, and as for the model, okay, <coughs> we see the cost of equity. Okay, is given us, okay, D naught one plus G. We divide by the current market value of this equal share plus G, okay, okay, plus G, okay, plus growth in the dividend, okay. So it's upon us now to identify all these variables, okay. Now, as per note three, okay, so let me uh, as per note three here, if we told that the company uh, adopts a 60% uh, note four, they do pay 60% of uh, they do pay 60% of the company, their earnings, okay. And if the company made six dollars, the earnings of the company was equal to six shillings, okay? Then we can see that for the dividend the company paid, okay, was 60%, okay, of the earnings, okay, of the earnings per share, okay? Therefore, it's be 0 0.6, we multiply by six, we give her, therefore, uh, 3.6 shillings, okay? Therefore, the payout or the company did pay uh, 3.6 uh, shillings as a dividend, okay? Don't forget, as month four, the company is paying 60%, okay? Uh, note three, they had the, the earnings they made was equal to six. Okay, they how much did they pay? They paid therefore 3.6 shillings as a dividend. Okay, so therefore, we do have our variable here. So, we have our dividend. Okay, now the next is to get a G, the growth in dividend. Okay, and the growth in dividend. Okay, given to us in note four, also we'll be told that the growth in dividend is seven percent. Okay, and lastly, we do need to get to get a P note. Okay, the X uh dividend. Okay, share price P note. Okay. And we told in note number one, the current market value of owner shares is equal to 50, okay? So it is equal to 50. So we have all the variables that we require uh, in order for us to estimate the cost of equity, okay? The cost of equity will be equal to D naught, 3.6. The growth is 10%, 0.7. We divide by P naught, P naught is equal to 50, okay? Plus 0 0.07, okay? And don't forget, we see that since we, uh, the value of the shares given there is not expressed either as cam dividend or x dividend, don't forget to see that we assume it is x dividend. If the question is silent, is silent, like in this example here, then of course we assume that uh, we are dealing with uh, a pay note is always going to be on x basis, okay? Uh, x interest in case they're debentures or bonds, x dividend in case it is private share or it is uh, uh, equity shares, okay? 
and that gives you therefore the cost of equity. And what do you get? Okay, we got answers. Okay. <clears throat> And we have 14.7, okay, we get 14.7%, okay, uh, to be uh, the cost of equity, okay, 14.7% with the cost of equity, okay. And that's the first capital source, the equity, the equity providers, okay. Now, once you've done that, okay, once you've done that, of course, the next thing is for us to get the, is to get uh, the cost of, so B now, okay, we can get the cost of present share. The cost of the venture, okay. So because if you go back to the capital structure, the company all has a ten percent debenture. So we can get here a cost of debenture, a debt, a debt source, okay. Cost of debenture, and in O two, okay, you be told that the debentures are irredeemable, and currently they do have a market value of one twenty. So they have a market value of one twenty. So therefore, P not, okay, is equal to one twenty shillings, okay. In note five, okay, don't forget this tax, okay. In note five, there's tax. Therefore, we can say for the net interest income, okay, to the holder, there's gain equal to, as per the capital structure, the debentures are ten percent, okay. They are ten percent debentures, okay. There will be ten percent we multiply by the nominal value, and the nominal value as per note uh, two is a hundred, okay. Then you pay tax, okay. In note five. Uh, you don't get all that income. That percent of it is tax. Therefore, we only retain. Uh, you only get seventy percent or zero point seven. Okay. Therefore, the net interest income to the holder is going to go seven shillings. Okay. Having done that, okay, we can now be able to get the cost of the debenture. And the cost of debenture, since this debenture is irredeemable, we say that the cost of the debenture R D is going to equal to the interest. Okay. We divide by P naught and we express that as a percent. The, inter the net is interest income is seven, the P naught is one twenty, and express that as a percent to give us therefore uh, what should be the cost of this debenture. Okay, could you give us how much? <clears throat> okay, and we get uh, five point eight three. Okay, thank you. We get five point eight three percent. To be the cost of the debenture, okay, five point eight three, okay, mm. and that's again the cost of the, this debenture, okay. Don't forget this debenture is simply it's an irredeemable, okay. So we have to be quite careful, okay. What uh, bonds am I dealing with, okay? Are they redeemable or are they irredeemable, okay? Now having done that, okay, identify the cost of equity, identified uh, the cost of uh, the debenture, okay. Our next step is, is of course now to get uh, the cost of that finance source, uh, which in this case is the 12% prevent share, okay, the 12% prevent share. So next, okay, C, okay, is to get the cost of prevent share, okay, to get the cost of prevent share, okay, cost of prevent share. And say so the cost of private share, so RP is equal to the preferred dividend that you do get as a private shareholder. We divide by the market value of those private share, okay, and you explain that as a percent, okay. So we need to get the preferred dividend, okay. This debenture, it is a 12% debenture, therefore, the, di the dividend is paid 12% of the nominal value. The 12% we multiply by the nominal value, and if you go back to the capital structure, the nominal value we told is 20 shillings. If you multiply by 20, and this give us therefore 2.4. Okay, therefore the preferred dividend okay, received by the holder is 2.4 shillings to infinity. Okay, 2.4 shillings to infinity. So we have our, we therefore we do have our numerator here. Okay. So next we get the P naught. Okay, the X dividend market value of those private shares. So P naught. If we refer to note one, we told that the market value of private share is 30. Okay, hope you can not see that. That is from note one. Okay, the peanut is 30 shillings. Okay. Now having done that, next is of course is to get therefore what therefore should be. Okay. What should be? Sorry. Okay, is to get therefore uh, what should be the cost of uh, the private share. Okay. Then the cost of private share, okay, RP is going to be the dividend. The dividend here you got 2.4. We divide P naught and P naught is equal to 30. And we do express that as a percent, okay? And you get how much to be there for 
uh, because of profit share. Okay, we have answers already. We get 8% to be our the cost of profit share, 8%. Okay. Don't this, okay. Uh, that we say that uh, we are going to have four steps. Okay, step one, identify the capital source. Uh, step two, get the cost from each one of them, which you have done. Step three, we get the market weights. Okay, therefore, now we go to step number three, we get the market weight from all these three capital sources. Okay, so the market values, market values. Okay, we had equity as one of the equity, the capital source. Okay, and equity. Uh, if we go back to uh, the balance sheet of this company or the capital structure, uh, you'll be told that the total nominal value of ordinary share is 30 million. Okay, 30 million. We can all see that. Okay, it's 30 million. Okay, that is the total of nominal value of the company equity share. And one share has a value of, has a power value of 10. Therefore, we divide by 10 to get, therefore, the number of shares this company has issued. This gives, therefore, the number of shares. We multiply, therefore, by the market value per one share. Okay, as per note one, uh, the market value was equal to 50. Okay, it must give, therefore, a total market value of the company equity share of 50 million. Okay. Next, we get the market value of the company present share. Okay, company present share. Okay, and the company present share, okay, going back to the company capital structure, okay, you be told. Okay, look, I'm moving too fast. Okay. Thank you for the feedback. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Innocent. So the market value of the company uh, equity share is 150 million. Thank you. Not not uh, 50 million, not 50 million, but 150 million. Okay. Okay, I'm always saying that we go back to the previous board with on the cost of capital. Okay, for the sake of a model, let's go back to the previous board. Okay, there we go, a model. A model, I hope it was clear, but just confirm as to whether it was clear. Just <clears throat> okay, it's okay. Okay. Okay, that simply is how we identify. So next, as we had said, we had said is that we get the market value from the three sources, okay? Uh, from equity, which you've just obtained, as well as from the preference share, okay? For the case of preference shares, okay, uh, to the capital structure, the preference share has a nominal value. If you go at the, uh, look at the uh, capital structure of this company, the nominal value is 5 million, okay? And the, preference, the nominal value per share is 20, therefore we divide by 20. And then as per note one, the market value per present share will be told is equal to 30, okay? Is equal to 30, and that gives you therefore the total market value of the present share. Yes, how much? Okay, then we get 7.5 million, okay? We get 7.5 million, therefore, uh, to be the market value of the company present shares, okay? And the last finances is the debenture. Okay, so next we have debenture. So next we can get the cost of debenture. Okay, and the cost of the debenture, uh, no, the market value of the debenture. So market value of the debenture. So you talk about the debentures of this company. Okay, uh, they have a power value of 100, that is as per node 2. Okay, the power value is 100, the market value is 120. Okay, they can say that for the market value of the debenture. If you go to the capital structure, the total nominal value of the company debenture is 15 million, therefore 15 million times therefore 1.2, okay, or simply 120 divided by 100. Okay, that therefore becomes therefore the market value of the company debenture, okay. And that's a bit simple, you do get the market value of the company debenture. To give us how much? <clears throat> We get 18 million, okay? We get 18 million, therefore, to be the market value of the company debentures, okay? 18 million, okay? 
Now, having done that, okay, because uh, we, are, we are done step one, we are done step two, we are done with step three, okay, that is to get the market of, uh, of uh, weights. And next is to get simply get the cost of capital, therefore, okay, to get the cost of capital, therefore, step four. Okay, and analysis here is to get the weighted average cost of capital. This company is financed by three sources. Okay, we have equity whose market value is one to one fifty. If it will be one fifty, the market value of equity times the cost of equity. Okay, and going back to our workings, okay, on cost of equity, let me go back to our previous board. Okay, the cost of equity we did obtain, okay, which is here, 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 we obtained fourteen point seven percent. Okay, therefore multiply by fourteen point seven percent. Okay. We multiply by fourteen point seven percent. Okay, plus the market weight of uh, debenture. Okay, we have just obtained it from here. Okay, it's here eighteen million. <coughs> so eighteen million times the cost of debenture, and the cost of debenture going back to our previous slide board, we have the cost of debenture which is here. Okay, was equal to. 5.83 okay 5.83 okay so multiply therefore by by multiply by 5.83 percent plus okay so plus okay uh the market weight of private share the market rate of private share uh we got for 7.5 million we got 7.5 million there was 7.5 million times the cost of private share okay so this is 7.5 million marking multiply by the cost of private share which we have here eight percent okay multiply by eight percent okay <clears throat> now how we know that therefore we divide by the total market weight okay total market weight okay actually what i've done it we ought to have added them here okay therefore the total market value let me just here the total market value from the resources okay let me just open a new board, okay? You need to show that, by the way, okay? How you get the total market weights, okay? Let me just see, let me go mark our board. So total market value, okay, of the of the of the resources, we have equity, uh, we have debenture, and we have present share, okay? Present share. Equity, we got 150 million, okay? A million of shares of million. Uh, debenture we got uh, 18 million for the share we got 7.5 million and three combined give therefore the total market value from those resources okay 150 plus 18 uh, plus 7.5 give us 180 170 mm -hmm. and get 175.7 million get 1.5 Point seven million. Okay, so don't get this should be part of your working. Okay, okay. If anything, it should have been uh, part of uh, step three. Okay, as you get the market values, uh, you ought to add them together to and, and you show. Okay, you need to show how you do. We did get uh, the one point five million. Okay, so anyway, let's go back to uh, working what we were discussing before. Okay, therefore we divide by one point five million. Okay. So all that, all this summation, okay, we divide by the 175.5 million, okay? And that's how we get, therefore, the company weighted average cost of capital, okay? <clears throat> so you get 13.5, I'm not sure, okay? Mm, we get 13.5. Now me, you may want to check me. Uh, I don't know whether uh, you may want to check on your answer. Thirteen point five percent, and that's how simply we do get the weighted average cost of capital for a company. Okay, okay, thirteen point five. Thank you, know me. Okay, yes, that's how you get the company cost of capital. Okay, I hope it's all. It was all clear. Okay. Uh, don't forget the easiest way when it comes to doing this question, okay, it's simply uh, getting to know those steps, okay, step one, get to know where the company got its money from, step two, uh, get the cost of capital from each one of those sources you have identified in step one, uh, step three, get the market weight, and step four, simply therefore get the company with an average cost of capital, okay, yes, that's how you do get the company with average cost of capital, okay. I hope it was all clear to all of you, okay? <clears throat>
Terima kasih for sure. Uh, you will get a question in in your exam, okay? So you'd rather be quite be prepared to uh, uh, to, to for this type of question because it will be there most likely, okay? It will be there. So uh, you need to grasp okay, uh, the content very well. Okay? You need to have it on your fingertips, okay? Okay. There's another question, okay, which I think we can also attempt together, okay? on May 2019, okay, May 2019, uh, question 3A, okay, May 2019, question 3A, May 2019, question 3A, so go for it, then we attempt together, May 2019, question 3A. Okay, I hope you have gone through the question. <clears throat> okay, and of course, uh, have a mental framework of what the steps you mean to carry out. And I've done that. Okay. Now, in this question, okay, there are three finance sources, more like in what you've just done in the previous question, okay, uh, where we do have the Company has has equity. Okay, in this case, equity is in two. We have ownership capital, and we do have retained earnings. We have debenture, and we have preference share. So it's more or less like just what we have uh, discussed in the previous question. Okay. <clears throat> However, don't forget here. Okay, uh, most of the instruments that is the equity shares, uh, the preference shares, the debentures, their market value is given uh, in calm interest or calm dividend. Okay, so you have to be careful because you need to uh, remove the interest and also remove the dividend. Okay. First step, identify which I've just done. Okay. Next step is to get the cost of capital from each of those finance sources. Okay. <clears throat> Therefore, we can begin the first one by getting the cost of equity. Okay, so A, we can do the second step. Okay, uh, is to get the cost of capital. Okay, from each of the sources. Okay. So it can be A by getting the cost of equity. So A we can get is the cost of equity. And the cost of equity, uh, you go to the to the to the, the or to the additional information, okay, go through those uh, uh, requirements and you're going to determine which model to use. Okay. Uh, from note two, okay, you can see that you've been given the dividends. Okay, note three and four, you'll be given some uh, information, okay, that can guide us in getting the growth in the dividend. Okay. So you see, therefore, you're going to be using uh, the dividend valuation model. Okay. Therefore, the cost of equity using the model, okay, will be equal to D naught one plus G. We divide by P naught, okay, plus G. Okay. So D naught, okay, the most it is a pay dividend. Okay, we've been told that as per note two, the company paid a dividend of five shillings in the just added year. So five. Okay. So yeah. Then G, the growth in dividend, okay, you'll be told that in node 2 and node 3, uh, the company, so in node 3 and node 4, the company adopts 60%, okay, the company do pay 60%, as well as the return on equity is 20%, okay. Uh, if you remember, we say that you can use two methods when it comes to estimating uh, what should be the growth in the dividend, okay, you can use two methods, okay, you can use the extrapolation method so simply uh extrapolating the past growth in dividend uh to be our future growth in the dividend okay which you can do that okay but in this case the, in this context we don't have the historical data okay so therefore you cannot use uh that model okay at the same time you can use the the next model you can use okay the second model you can use is called the gordon's or approximation method or simply the retention model okay and as for the retention model we see that g is influenced by two factors one is the retention ratio, then you have the return on equity. Okay, the retention ratio, and you have the return on equity. Now, in this example, okay, look, it's, we have all the information, okay, to our user model, okay, to get a G. In note number three, we are saying the payout is 60, which means therefore the retention is 40. Because in case we pay 60, it means retain 40. Okay, therefore we have our B here. Our, our retention ratio, therefore, which is equal to 0 0.4. We multiply by return on equity and return on equity as per node 4, a be told is equal to 20%. Therefore, multiply by 20% to give us therefore a G of 8%. Okay. Yet, therefore, the growth in dividend uh, to be equal to 8%. Okay. 
coming down but next is to get <clears throat> next is to get the peanut okay next we get the peanut now in this example the peanut okay in note number one you be told the company market price per share is 45 shillings come dividend that means therefore you need to remove the dividend to get the peanut or the x dividend uh, share price okay in this case you be told the come dividend is 45 the dividend is equal to five we may for the x dividend therefore is equal to 40 okay the x share price therefore is equal to 40 okay that's how that's simply how you get uh, the peanut or the x dividend uh, share price but five minus five give us 40. so the value of the share without the dividend okay is simply equal to 40 for five minus five okay. now we have the, we have all the variables to get the cost of equity therefore the cost of equity will be d naught okay which is equal to five one plus the growth, the growth is is eight percent, zero point eight, divide by P naught, which we got forty plus zero point zero eight, and that therefore give us therefore the cost of equity. Okay, you get how much? <clears throat> okay, we got answers here. <clears throat> And get 21.5. We get 21.5 percent to be the cost of equity. Okay. Next is we can also get the cost. So that is how we get the cost of equity. Okay, by using uh, the dividend valuation model. Okay. Uh, next we can get the cost of the capital structure. Uh, this company has the 12 percent uh, bond dimensions that are redeemable. So here, cost of debenture. The cost. Of debenture can be our next working and since these debentures are redeemable we say the rd okay will be equal to the interest we divide the peanut okay we express this as a percent okay if the interest you get as a holder okay then this debenture pays at 12 percent okay uh, this is, is this information is from the capital structure uh, given there it is a 12 percent a redeemable debenture therefore to be 10 percent we multiply by the power value of this debenture okay and the power of this debenture okay as for the question okay you can see that it is 20. okay i hope you're getting this from uh, the capital structure okay 10 percent debenture uh with the shillings 20 shillings uh, sh 20, 20 shillings power value therefore, we multiply by 20. do you pay tax yes in note 7 okay in note 7 you know, the corporate tax rate is 30 percent so you're only going to be getting uh 20 percent so we have one minus 0 0.3 and therefore give therefore the net interest income the holder shall be getting 80 okay, percent times 20 20 be the power value times 0 0.7 okay to give us how much 4.2 confirm Okay, when you got answers here, uh, you get 1.68%. The interest is 1.6%. Hmm, what am I not getting here? What's the net interest? It was 4.2. Okay, what was 4.2? So I'm presupposing that you guys have done the entire cost. Okay. 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 If uh, you got four point two, <clears throat> okay. Therefore, the cost of the debenture. Sorry, the cost of the cost of this debenture. Okay, it will be got four point two. Therefore, uh, we divide by. How do you get 1.68? Just to be curious. Let me ask one of you who got 1.68. Louisa? Yes. 
How do you get 1.68? I took the 12% yes. times 20, which yes. is net of, in, of the tax, which is which comes to 14. So it's 12% of 14. 12% of 14. Mm -hmm. So 12% of times 20, isn't it? Yes. Times 0 0.7. Yes. Uh, what do you get? So tw 20 times 0 0.7, I got 14. So 12% of 14 gave me 1.68. Uh, 1.68. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. So here it's 1.68. Oh, okay. 1.68. Thank you for that. Okay, so you get one shade in 1.68, therefore, to be the uh, X interest, uh, to be the interest to be received by the holder after tax. Okay, therefore, the cost of this debenture, okay, is going to be equal to 1.68. We divide by, okay, we divide by uh, P0. Okay, now P0, okay, the X interest market value this year, okay, uh, if you check note 5, okay, note 5. The existing twelve percent, uh, uh, the existing twelve percent bonds are, uh, that are redeemable, they are currently trading at one twelve uh, come interest. Okay, so currently uh, they are trading uh, at one uh, at one twelve. Okay, come interest. Okay. Therefore, what is the X interest? So we need to get the P note. Okay, what is therefore the X interest? Okay, the X interest market value. Okay, of this debenture P note. Okay. Is going to come interest, which is going to be one twelve minus the potential interest we receive. Okay. Now it's going to be one twelve. The come interest value of those bonds, okay, uh, minus the potential interest we earn out of it, okay, and the potential interest we earn out of it, okay, just done calculation, okay, is equal to one point six eight, okay, one point six eight, okay, therefore minus one point six eight, okay. Now, therefore, give us therefore what is going to be the market value of the bond without the potential inter income uh, to be received. Okay, uh, don't forget we are not going to be using the entire uh, is it fourteen. Okay, we are not going to be using the uh, uh, interest before tax. Is interest after tax? The potential uh, interest the holders shall be getting after tax because it's it's what they're going to be getting. Okay, so the value of the bond is going to be increasing. Okay, by the potential income the holder shall be getting. We get one something, and we get one ten. Uh, we get one ten point three two. Okay, that's from Michelle, and then as Daniel. Okay, that gives us the X interest uh, market value of those bonds. Okay, now going back to our to our uh, analysis here on top. Okay, we have the interest here. Okay, we have the interest here one point six eight. Okay, don't forget the formula is interest divided by P naught. Okay, we have the two variables now. Okay. Therefore, 1.68, we divide, therefore, by the X interest, that is 110.32, and we express this as a percent. You give us how much? <clears throat> okay, to give us 1.52, okay? 1.52, okay? That will therefore to be the, the cost of this debt, of this, deb of this debenture, okay? 1.52. <clears throat> Okay. Having done that, next is to get the cost. Don't forget, we had three finance sources: equity, which you've done. Okay. Uh, we had three. We had equity, which you've just done. Okay. Uh, there's equity. Okay. We have debenture, which you've just done. Okay. Therefore, part C. Okay. Now is to get. Let me just go to the next part of the board. So part C. Okay. Is to get the cost of the preference shares. Okay. So cost of preference shares. Okay, cost of preference uh, shares. Okay, and so when it comes to estimate the cost of preference share, okay, let me go to my next board. Okay, the cost of preference share, which is given us that P is going to give us the dividend, preferred dividend, we divide by P naught and we express this as a percent. The preferred dividend, okay, for this particular uh, preference share, okay, as per the capital structure, they are paying at 14%. Okay, therefore, it would be 14%. We multiply it by their nominal value. And the nominal value of this preference share, as per the capital structure, it be told is equal to 25. 15%, 25, therefore, 
will be the preferred dividend for this particular uh, equity, uh, for this particular preference share, okay? And you get how much to be the preferred dividend. Okay, and we have some answers here. <clears throat> okay, we get 3.5. 3.5 shares okay therefore uh, the preferred shareholders okay every year they'll be getting a preferred dividend of 3.5 next is we get a peanut okay the x uh, dividend share price okay if we go to note six okay note six the 14 percent private shares are currently trading at the 3.5 come dividend Okay, therefore, we need to get a T-naught, okay, we can be equal to the current dividend share price at 3.5 minus the dividend 3.5, okay, to give us 30, yes, to give us 30, okay, that should be therefore to be uh, the P-naught, the X interest uh, market value, the X dividend market value of those private share. Therefore, the private share at P be equal to the dividend, okay, which you have here, 3.5 divided by X interest, which you have here, equal to 30. Therefore, 3.5 divided by 30, and we express this as a percent. Okay, give us how much? Okay, we get 11.67, 11.67% with the cost of this debenture, 11.67, okay? Having done that, okay, the next step, because is not to get the market weight, okay? So next is to get the market weight, okay? So step three, <clears throat> okay, I will talk all clear to all of you, okay. Uh, step three, having identified the cost of capital from those three finance sources, is to get the market values, okay. So market values, we have equity, and the market value equity, going back to the company capital structure, okay, the total nominal value of the company equity share is 50 million. One share has a power value of 20, okay? This, all this information is on the capital structure given the, at the beginning of the question. Therefore, the total number of value is equal to 50 million. We divide by the number of value per share, which is equal to 20, therefore divide by 20. Then we multiply by the X interest market value of the shares of the company, okay? Uh, which we got in our previous board, okay? In a previous calculation, okay? Just go to go back to our previous board. We got the P naught, okay? It's here, okay. This is our P not here, okay, which is 40. The X in the X dividend market value per private share. Therefore, we multiply therefore by the 40. Okay, therefore times 40. That give therefore uh, the market value of the company equity shares. Okay, total market value therefore is how much? <clears throat> so you get how the median, okay. Ebontani is asking, what about the 30 million of retained earning? Okay, good question, Ebontani. Okay, essentially, okay, the cost of equity, okay, is only going to be attaching to the retained earning. Okay, so cost of equity, okay, you didn't see a question later on. Uh, however, the cost, the retained earning, as per se, okay, if the company is yet to use them. If the company is yet to use those retained earning, okay, then we normally say that they don't have a cost as per se right now. But once the company actually start using the retained earning to make an investment, okay, to invest in a project, okay, now the cost of equity is going to be touching uh, also on the retained earning, not just on the on the ordinary share capital, but also on the retained earning. In this context, you not be told the company is going to be using the uh, 30 million of retained earning. So the cost of equity is not yet is yet to attach on those retained earning. Okay, we don't use it as per se. But if the company is going to be using the 30 million, okay, to finance a project, then the cost of equity need to attach on those returning. Therefore, in this example, we should have included that million, okay, so we had 100 million plus that million. By this question, okay, the company is yet to use it, okay. Now, why is the cost not yet attaching on the returning? Because the company can pay in future dividends from the 30 million. Okay, so it is possible for the shareholder uh, to get the dividend paid out of the 30 million. Okay, so as per se, by that time, by that point in time, the cost is yet to attach on the retail earning. Okay, I hope I'll be able to explain for uh, to you, uh, Ebon Tane. Okay, as well as to the rest of you. Okay, so in this example, don't forget we don't need to use the retail earning. Okay, why? Because we are yet to use it. Okay, 
So you're only going to be using, therefore, the ordinary share capital as to represent, therefore, our equity, okay, but not the return earning. Okay. Now, having done, therefore, the market value equity, next we get the market value of the bonds that I did in my book. Okay. So, therefore, the market value of the debentures. Okay. And it'll be equal to the power per debenture is 20. The top, top nominal value of all the debenture is 25 million. Therefore, the number of debentures okay, is equal to 25 million. Divide by 20, the power value per debenture, we multiply by the market value per debenture, okay, which is the X interest. Be careful with the X interest. Okay, so going back to our previous board, okay, uh, the X interest uh, market value of the debenture we got was okay, we have it here, we got 110.32. Okay, so 110.32. Okay, therefore, multiply therefore by 110.32. The X interest market value of those debentures to give us how much. To give us one that's seven point nine million. Okay, one the seven point nine million. All these figures are in million. Okay, more or less. Okay. Next, you get the market value of the company present share. Okay, the market value of the company present shares, which be equal to. So going back to the company capital structure, the present share total present total number of value of the present share is fifteen million. Uh, one preference share has a power value of 25. Okay, therefore, we can say for the number of preference share issued is equal to 15 million. Divide by the market value per, uh, we divide by the nominal value per preference share, which in this case is equal to 25. So divide by 25, we multiply by the total, uh, by the market value per preference share. Okay, which in this case, I think you've already done, which we got 30. Okay, we have here. You got 30, therefore, we multiply by 30. That give therefore the total uh, market value uh, of the company preference shares, which is how much 18 million. Okay, which got 18 million. Okay, thank you for that. 18 million. Okay, therefore, the total market value for the three finance sources. Okay, okay. thank you, Maureen. Is therefore going to be 100 million plus 100 million plus 18 million to give us two. Okay, we get 255.9 million. 255.9 million will be the total market value from those three finance sources equity, debenture, as well as from the preference shares. Okay, so we've done step one identify the capital sources. Step two, uh, I'll determine the cost of equity from each one of the cost of capital from each one of them. Uh, step three, get the market values. In step four, we determine therefore the company, uh, the weighted average cost of capital. Okay, so I want to go to my next board. Okay, we attempt now to get the company weighted average cost of capital. <clears throat> therefore, weighted average cost of capital for this company will be equal to the market value of equity, which you got hundred million. Okay, which is here. Okay, the market value of equity, 100 million. We multiply by the cost of equity. And if you go back to our previous board, the cost of equity, what we did identify is here 21.5 percent. Therefore, 21.5 percent multiply by 21.5 percent. Okay, 21.5 percent. Okay, that here, therefore, uh, what should be the cost of equity? Plus, this company is also financed by debt, okay, therefore market value of debt, okay, which we got from working here, uh, we did get, okay, we did get one that's nine, well, that's 10.9 million, okay, therefore the market value of, of debt, one that's 10.9 million times the cost of debt, okay, which we did obtain from a previous working times the cost of debt, uh, which we got here, the cost of debt was equal to how much? We got it here, okay. We got 1.1.52, okay. Multiply therefore by 1.52, okay, times 1.52. This company also has private share, therefore, market value of private share, okay, from a previous working, okay. We got it here 18 million, okay, 18 million, therefore, will be 18 million times the cost of private share, okay. Times the cost of permanent share, 
Therefore, from the previous work in here, preference share has a cost equal to, it's here, we have it here, okay? 11.67%, okay? Therefore, we multiply by 11.67%, okay? We divide this by the total market value of the three finance houses, okay? Which you obtain here to be 255, it's here, 255.9 million. So divide by the 255.9 million you're left for the company with an average cost of capital which is how much 10.04 okay so you get 10.04 percent therefore the company cost of capital from all those three different capital providers okay 10.04 <clears throat> Question, if you have a question, don't forget, you let me know. Okay. And that's how we do get the cost uh, of capital for an entire company, okay? Dif uh, from all uh, the different capital providers, okay? Hope it was crystal clear. Okay, time for another question. Okay, that uh, which we can attempt. More or less, in any question, in any, in any city that you're going to be doing, okay, they are most likely you'll find a question. Okay, they're asking you to get uh, the cost of capital. Okay, you'll find a question for sure. <clears throat> Okay, so in case we uh, go through uh, May 2018, okay, May 2018, uh, question 3B. May 2018, question 3B. Okay, so go for it. Uh, we discuss together May 2018, question 3B. Okay. So May 2018, question 3B. Okay, so go through it. We discuss together. <laughs> So take two minutes. Okay, I presuppose that you have gone through the question. Okay. So more is going to be the same same process, okay, that you have discussed in the other question. Okay. First step, get the cost, uh, determine, okay. Uh, determine uh, uh, where the company obtains its money from or its capital from. In this example, we have audience share capital. You have present shares and you have the dependent shares. Okay. Next, you get the cost from each one of them. Okay. So not we can have the four uh, working one. Okay. So this is our step two. Okay. Uh, is we get the cost of capital from each of the source. So it can be in A, the cost of equity. Okay. And the cost of equity as per the information given to us there. Okay. Um, in O2, we have been given the dividend for the following year, 1.2. Uh, we have also been given the payout, that is the growth in the dividend, okay? Uh, which implies, therefore, we can use the dividend growth model, okay? So in this context, uh, we don't use, we don't need to use the capital as a price model, okay? Therefore, as the cost of equity, it is going to be equal to D naught, one plus G. We divide by P naught, okay, plus G. Or simply, D1, we divide by P0 plus G, okay? Don't forget D0 is the most given paid dividend. D1 is what is getting paid in the next one financial year. So in this example, actually, okay, in you know, O2, uh, the dividend is expected, okay, to be paid in the following year. So simply by the end of the year. So that is not our D0, it is our D1, okay? So be careful, okay, that in O2, uh, this is a deal getting paid the following year, okay? So it is not D0, okay? It is D1. So therefore, we don't need to grow it because it's getting paid in the following year, okay? More or less like the end of the year, uh, even 2020, then this is getting paid therefore in the year 2021. So it is not D0, but D1, okay? So don't grow it like in the model here, okay? Therefore, in that case, therefore, <clears throat> therefore, our cost of equity, okay? So therefore, cost of equity, 
okay we are going to equal to d1 which you know 2 is equal to 1.2 we divide by p naught the market value of those shares which is 30 plus the growth in dividend and the growth in dividend in this case will be told is 10 percent as per naught 3 0 0.1 and that will therefore give us therefore the cost of equity, okay, which is equal to 14% as from Naomi. Confirm that answer. Okay, from Lois as well as from Samuel Esther to be equal to 14%. Okay, we get 14% to be the cost of equity. Okay, then the thanks, Charles. And what you'll be careful here, the only thing you have to be careful here is that we are the the 1.2, okay, the D1, okay, is 1.2, don't grow it. Like, don't forget here, this we grow the D0, okay, the most recently paid dividend, okay, so be quite careful uh, when it comes to applying the model, okay. If it's D0, it's D0, you need to grow it. If it's D1, like in this context, don't grow it, okay. Next is to get the cost of the next finances. In this case, we have the 10% present share. So cost of present share, okay, cost of present share. We have RP is going to be equal to the preferred dividend. We divide P naught and we express this as a percent. Therefore, the preferred dividend, okay. So this uh, present share, they, are, they do pay 10%, okay. They do pay 10%. They are going to be 10% multiplied by the par value, okay. And the par value of the company present share. Mm, the present shares. Okay, the present uh, dividends. Ah, okay. If you take out the company, if you take out the capital structure of this company, okay, uh, we've been told that one million ten percent present shares. Okay, I hope you can see that. Okay, it's one million ten percent present shares with a total nominal value of twenty million. Therefore, in case, since there were 1 million shares and the total per share, uh, uh, total nominal value is 20 million, okay, and imply therefore uh, the nominal value per present share must be 20 million divided by 1 million, okay, uh, to give us simply uh, 20 uh, to be the power value per present share, okay. Maybe just we're simply working for that, okay. Not needed, but just to show you, okay, because say the power value per present share, okay, the power value uh, per present share is equal to 20 million. We divide by one million shares to give therefore 20. Okay. The preferred dividend, therefore, will be 10% times 20. Okay. To give therefore two shillings. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lois, for that. Okay. Yes, it is. Uh, uh, it is 20. Okay. The give, the give, therefore, the power value per uh, present share. Okay. So the market value, so you have done the D naught, so you've done the, the, the preferred dividend. So now is get the D naught, the market value per present share. In note six, in note six, it we told that the company are still trading at their face value or their power value, okay, which is 20. Okay. Therefore. Okay, therefore, so therefore the cost of Present share or D is going to be equal to the dividend, which is two. We divide by the P naught. Okay, so we can just make a note here. The P naught is equal to face value, which is equal to 20 shillings. Okay, so we do by 20 and we express this as a percent. You will therefore are 10 percent. Okay, 10 percent. Thank you, Botani. Okay, we get therefore the cost of premium shares to be equal to 10%. Okay, now actually, okay, uh, if you take at note six, where the market value and the phase value are equal, the market value and the phase value are equal, okay, essentially the cost of certain instruments, if the market, uh, if the instrument is trading at its power value, is simply equal to the interest is paying or the dividend it is paying. Okay, what do you mean by that? If you look at the market value of this particular share, we will say that it is equal to 20, is equal to 10. The power value, okay, I think you've just done it, is equal to 20. 
So by default, the cost of this preference share must be equal to the rate of interest it is rate of dividend it is paying, which is equal to 10%, which is what you have in the cover structure. The period 1 million, 10% preference share. Okay. So in this case, therefore, you may not need the working. Okay. But it's good you have the working either way. Okay. Just in case your examiner uh, doesn't patronize you. Okay. But if the financial instrument is trading at its par value, at its, its face value, then simply its cost is equal to uh, the rate it is paying. Okay. So in this, uh, for example, in this particular example, uh, it is paying a rate of 10%. Therefore, simply its cost is equal to 10%. Okay. Hope that is clear. Okay. <clears throat> Next, we get the debenture. So C, cost of debenture. So C, we get the cost of debenture. Cost of debentures, okay. And this debenture, as per note five, as per note five, the debenture matures in 100 years. Okay, so N, the number of years to uh, redemption is 100 years, okay. P not the uh, the market the x interest market value share as per note four the p not is equal to one ten shilling and these debentures they are paying at six percent therefore the interest is equal to six percent the nominal value per prevalence uh, per debenture if we go back the capital structure is one fifty okay you can see that uh, one fifty so therefore six percent we multiply by one fifty shilling do you pay tax? Yes. In note seven, you can see that uh, there's that percent tax. Therefore, the net interest income is equal to seventy percent. And that therefore give therefore the net interest income to be received six percent times one fifty. The one fifty is a power value. Okay, as per the capital structure you have there, we multiply it by seventy percent. Okay, and that give us that will give us give us therefore uh, what should be the net interest income. And get how much? <clears throat> okay, we got some answers. So we get six point three to be. Uh, we get six point three, therefore, to be the interest six point three. Thank you for that. Okay, six point three shillings. Okay. Okay. What is we need? We have the net interest. We have the number of years conversion. Uh, we have the current payment. Okay. I guess now we can able to estimate uh, what should be uh, the uh, what should be the uh, cost of this debenture. Okay. So since this debenture is redeemable, okay, therefore. And that's it for the peanut is equal to uh, the interest you get, the net interest income received, okay, times present value and factor, okay, uh, n years r percent plus redemption value, present value interest factor, okay, uh, n years r percent. <coughs> we know that the x interest market value this debenture is 110, therefore, it'll be 110 is equal to. The interest, 6.3, times present value and factor, 100 years, R percent, plus redemption value, okay, the, in this context, it is silent, therefore we assume the redemption occurs at the face value, okay, the redemption occurs at the power value, and the power value of this debenture is 150, okay, the redemption occurs at the power value, okay. And the power value of this dimension is 150 as per the capital structure we have there at the beginning of the question. We have 150 times present value interest factor, okay, and it is R percent. This is a trial and the number comes in here, okay. We see that to reduce the number of attempts you're going to make, okay, therefore, the, the cost of the same debenture, the cost of the same debenture, if it was, if it was to be irredeemable, irredeemable would be equal to, okay, you don't include this working, but just for our note taking here, okay? It will be equal to the interest, 6.3, divided by the market value, 110. We express this as a percent, okay? This would be the cost of the same debenture if it was to be irredeemable, okay? They give us 5 point.
okay, to give us 5.7, to give us 5.7, okay. Therefore, roughly, therefore, uh, we can be able to say that, don't forget, you don't need this working, but this is just for our uh, note-taking here, okay. Therefore, you can see therefore, the cost of this dementia will not be too far apart from 5.7, okay. Therefore, you can start discounting at 6%, okay. Therefore, first trial can be at 6%, okay. Therefore, <clears throat> You can see therefore, uh, zero is equal to negative P naught, one ten times 6.3, okay, no, sorry, not times, okay, plus, okay, not times, but plus, plus 6.3, okay, multiplied by the present value and factor, 100 years, 6%, so this is a first trial, you're trying, so at 6% of first trial, okay, plus the redemption value, 150 times present value interest factor, uh, 100 years, 6%. Okay, therefore what do you get to be the sum of those cash flows? I doubt your tables as 100 years, okay? So in this context, therefore, you may have to use the formula, okay? Both your tables, I don't think we have uh, uh, years for 100, okay? So you may have to use the formulas, okay, to get uh, the present value of those cash flows, okay? How do you get? Okay, I think we got some answers from some of you. Okay, uh, so we get negative four point, negative four point eight seven. Okay, negative four point eight seven shillings. Okay. Now, okay, we can use our second discount. Okay, I presuppose it. Uh, you are trying to get that or the others, okay? Negative 4.87. What if now we use our second discount rate, okay? What if now we use our second discount rate, okay? For example, maybe five, okay? For example, five percent. Uh, what should be uh, the sum, okay? At five percent, you can use seven, but don't get this a trial and error method, okay? But I want to reduce the. I want to increase the present value. Okay, so that's why I have chosen five percent. Okay, at five percent, the same same process we've just done. Okay, you're going to get it be equal to negative one ten. Okay, times sorry, not times plus. Okay, plus uh, six point three times present value added factor. Hundred years of five percent this time round. Okay, plus 150 times present value interest factor, okay, 100 years, 5%. What will we get? So the same process, but now we are going to discount those cash flows at 5% as opposed to, okay, we got some answers. So we get 16.18, okay, we get 16.18 positive, okay. Now having those two figures, therefore, we, now we can be able to estimate, therefore, what should be the cost of this debenture, okay? It should be equal to, okay, I want to go to the next board, we can just do it here. At D should be equal, therefore, be equal to, at the lower discount rate here is 5%, therefore, 5% is the lower discount rate, plus the difference, which is 1%. The value is 5% or 16.18, divide by 16.18, minus, minus 4.87. Okay, 4.87, and therefore we'll give therefore the cost of this debenture, okay? Which is how much? Okay, we got the answer and get 5.77. Okay, so you get 5.77 percent uh, to be the cost of the debenture. Okay, now in this company, we had three financials we had equity, we had private shares, and now we have the debenture. Okay, so we have done all that. Okay, obtaining or determining uh, what should be the cost of capital, uh, cost of capital uh, from all those uh, uh, different capital sources. Now, having done that, what next? get the market values therefore next step is to get uh, the market values okay so i want to go to my next board to get the market value that is okay uh, step number three okay 
Okay, so we get the market values from each of those finance sources. Okay, so market values. So equity being one of them. So don't forget here, we, I, I want to use the name, okay, because the company is not just using that name. okay, so the cost is yet to attach on them, okay. Now, equity, this company, they have three million shares, okay, if you go uh, to the capital structure, there are three million shares, therefore, the market value, three million shares, are multiplied by the market value per share, in note one, the market value per share is 30, okay, if we multiply by 30, uh, to give a therefore, the total market value in million to be equal to 30 million, to be 90 million, sorry, okay? 30 million times three, uh, uh, 3 million times 30, give us 90 million to be the total market value of the company's share, okay? Next, we get the market value of the company preference share, the market value of the company preference shares. The preference shares issued is 1 million, okay? This is information from the capital structure information. There are one million issue preference share multiplied by the market value per preference share. If we told that they are trading at their face value and the face value, I think we got 20. Okay, so simply the market value is equal to the book value. So it is equal to 20 million therefore. Next, the market value of debenture. Market value of debenture. The debenture, you be told that the debentures, you be told that they do have a power value of 150 and the total nominal value is 30 million. Therefore, the number of debentures issued is 30 million. We divide by the, the market value per, the power value per debenture, which is 50. We multiply by the market value per debenture, uh, that is as per not four, that is 110. Okay, so multiply by 110 uh, to give us, therefore, the total market value of the debentures of the company. To give us how much? Okay, so we got an answer. <clears throat> okay, that is from David as well as from Michelle. 22 million. Okay, 22 million. Thank you. And those are the three market value from the three finance sources. Next, we get the total market value from those three finance sources. Okay, 90 plus 20 plus 20, uh, 22 to give us 132 million. Okay, to give us that for 132 million. Okay. The last step is, of course, you get there for the company cost of capital, okay? The company the average cost of capital, mm. which will be equal to, okay? Which will be equal to, with an average cost of capital, the company has obtained money from equity, and the market value of equity we have just done is 90 million times the cost of equity, okay? Times the cost of equity, okay? The cost of equity, okay? I want to go to our previous workings. To get the cost of equity, uh, we got cost of equity. We got what? We got fourteen percent. Here it is. Okay, uh, we got fourteen percent. Is this the case? Yes, we got fourteen percent. Okay, so we got fourteen percent. Okay, we got fourteen percent with the cost of equity. Therefore, times fourteen percent. Okay, times fourteen percent. Plus the market value of present share. 20 million times the cost of preference share. Okay, so from a previous working, the cost of preference share. Okay, we got, we got what? Now we got 10, we got 10%. Uh, we got 10%, the cost of the preference share, 10%. Okay, so times 20%. Plus the mounted value of debenture. We have just obtained 22 million times the cost of debenture from a previous working. Okay, we have just obtained the cost of the debenture to be equal to 5.77. Okay, we have it here 5.77 percent. Therefore, times uh, therefore uh, 5.77 percent. We divide by the total market value of the three finance sources. That is 132 million. Okay, and this will give us how much to be the cost of capital for the entire company. Okay, we have answers already here. And you get 12.202. Charles, you want to check the answer? 12.02. 12 12.02% 12 with the company, therefore, uh, the company uh, cost of capital, 12.02%. Yes, and that's how we identify the cost of capital 
for an entire company, okay? Your question, don't forget you let me know, okay? So I would want to ask Mosotti. So Mosotti? Look? Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Okay, until what time? Yeah. Uh, 7.30. Okay, fair enough. Then we can meet at 7.30. We can meet at 7.30 for our second session. Okay, see you then. Okay. Uh, uh, there's a question that I would want you, okay, to attempt on your own. Then we attempt it together. And this is on the November 2016. Okay, November. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Okay, so you attempt on the November 2016 question 2B. Okay, so you attempt that question. So attempt November 2016 question 2 part B. Okay, so try as much as, as, as possible, uh, whatever you can be able to do that question. Okay, uh, all the from cost of equity uh, 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 to the cost of private shares, cost of the bonds. Uh, cost of long-term loan, okay? Try as much as possible, okay? So I want to give you some time, okay? So try to get the cost of capital, uh, that is Roman one, all that question, and it's asking us to get the company uh, with the average cost of capital, okay? So I want you to attempt that question, okay? Attempt that question, okay, Roman one. I want to give you 15 minutes, okay? 15 minutes on your own, attempt that question. So I give you 15 minutes, okay? And uh, November 2016, question two, part B. Okay, so we meet uh, at 7.46. Okay, it's for, your, it's, it's, it's for your own good, okay? So uh, don't just uh, lay back and wait for the answer. No, attempt that question, okay? That's our learning occur, okay? By you uh, uh, getting your hearts dirty, more or less. Okay, fair enough, we meet at 7. 46, okay, you haven't done that question, then you're going to be marking yourself as you go across, okay? Hope it's clear. Okay, I suppose that you have gone through the question, okay, and you have made the attempt, okay? But don't forget that was purely for your own good, okay? I hope you have done that. I really hope that that's what you have done. Now let's go through, okay, as you try to check on whether, on where you could have maybe had issue, on where you could have gone it wrong, okay, uh, on that question. Now this question, okay, it has a number of things, okay, first of all that it has four finance sources, okay, it has equity, okay, it has present shares, it has bonds, and it has a bank loan, okay, so in this case we have four of them, okay, but in media four when it comes to determining the cost of capital, it's more than enough to determine for each one of those four, okay, from equity, uh, private shares, from bonds, as well as from the bank loans, okay? So we have the seven of them, the five, of, sorry, the four of them, okay? So we can begin by getting the cost of equity, okay? We can begin by getting the cost of equity, okay? So here, cost, so step two, okay? Step number two is to get the cost of capital, okay, from each of those sources, okay? So you have A, cost of equity. And as per the information number one, okay, you'll be told that the company, uh, the X dividend market value is 47, uh, the ordinary dividend of the company that has just been paid is 3.63, okay? So more or less uh, from mode one as well as from mode two, you know, two, You've been given the past dividend all the way from 2013 to 2016. Okay, so more or less we have all the information that uh, we do need. Okay, that's therefore you're going to be using the uh, dividend growth model when it comes to estimating the cost of equity. Okay, when it comes to estimating the cost of equity. Okay, therefore, as for the model, we say that the cost of equity is given as D naught, okay, one plus G. Okay, we divide P naught, okay, plus G. Okay, so D naught. We said is the most recent pay dividend. Okay, in note one, they be told the company has just paid three point six three. 
Okay, so therefore, that is becoming for our D naught, 3.63. That's the D naught. Next, we need to get the G, the growth in dividend. Okay, so G, uh, the earliest dividend we have here, okay, is in 2013. That's the earliest dividend we have here, 2013, uh, which was 3.09. The latest one, the D naught here is 3.63. Okay, so therefore, we can be able to estimate what is the growth uh, from 3.09 to 3.63. Therefore, the G, 3.63, we divide by 3.09 for 2013. How many years of growth? Okay, don't forget now 2016, the dividend there then was 3.5. Which means, therefore, the dividend, the 3.63, okay, can only be 2017 dividend. Okay. We can go to get to 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 uh, to construe from the, the statement uh, number one and number two that in 2016 the dividend was 3.5, 3.63 we have in note one this must have been for 2017. Okay, there we have four years of growth. Okay, from 2013 to 2017, there are four years of growth. Therefore, the power of a quarter. Okay, the power of a quarter minus one. Therefore, to give therefore what should be the annual growth in the dividend. And what do you get? Hope that is clear because that's where you may want you may get some issues. Okay. And you get how much with the growth in the dividend? <clears throat> okay, and we have answers already. Sorry. Answers here. Equal to 4.11. Thank you. We get 4.1 percent. Okay, so 4.1 percent comes for the annual growth in dividends. Okay, be careful as I mentioned here. Be careful that you're going to be using not for not 3.56. Okay, and the dividend for year 2016, but the dividend for year 2017. That's what uh, you ought to be using. So be quick, be careful there. Okay, <clears throat> okay, have you done that? Except we can be able to get now the cost of we have the G for the P naught. Uh, P naught you've been given in naught one is equal to four point seven. Okay, therefore because the cost of equity. Lois, you have a question, so let me check you out. Lois, where is Lois? Yes, Lois, I want to admit you. <clears throat> What if we I used the the twenty sixteen and the twenty thirteen, but I used three years. I used three years. Uh, maybe yeah. I don't, I'm not sure, but whether you're going to get the same growth in the dividend because sometimes you can have a scenario where the G is going to be different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What do you get with the G in case you're to use twenty thirteen, twenty sixteen? Have you done four that? Point. Yeah. You got four point two. Four point two percent. Okay. So maybe the difference here might not be material, okay? But I would propose that you you use the extremes, okay? Use the uh, dividend for the year for the period beginning, the 2013, and the most recent dividend. In this case, therefore, is the year 2017, the 3.63 percent, the 3.63 shillings, okay? So I would propose that uh, you use the extreme. Don't use the years in between the two years, the 2013 and 2017. Don't use the year in between the two. Use the extremes, the beginning and the most recent year. Because you can have scenario where the figures are very different, okay? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, therefore you get the G, therefore to be equal to uh, 4.1. And I guess now you can go to get the cost of equity, to be equal to D naught, 3.63. Don't forget D naught, the D naught is 3.63, not 3.5. Be careful, okay? Uh, multiply by 1.041. Divide by P naught, uh, P naught as per naught one, the X D the market value of the share is 47 plus okay, 0 0.41. Okay, and you get how much? With the cost of equity. Okay, okay, we get the cost of equity to be equal to 12.14 percent, uh, to be the cost of equity. Okay. Now the next finances for this particular uh, company is the 4% preference share. Therefore, cost of preference share. Cost of preference shares. Is it RP is equal to the preferred dividend. Okay. Preferred dividend, we divide by P naught. Okay. Uh, we express this as a percent. Okay. 
Look, let me know whether you can be able to see the screen. Okay, you can do all that on the chat. Okay, they for the preferred event. Okay, for this company. Okay, uh, they do pay a four percent. Okay, so therefore, uh, the rate of paying the deal is four percent. We multiply by the nominal value, and the nominal value uh, for this particular share, as per the capital structure, is one. Okay, therefore, times one uh, to give therefore four cents. Okay, so this company, uh, the preferred dividend that it pays is equal to uh, four cents. Okay, four cents. Look, can you see the screen now? Amolo. I hope you can see the screen. I'm trying to unmute you, but anyway, I hope you can see the screen. Okay, so you get four cents, therefore, to be the preferred dividend yes. of the company. You I can, see, I can see the screen. Yeah. Now, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm saying. Yes. It, it, where, where you're getting the growth rate for the yeah. equity? For the equity, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. The, the, the statements we have been given is for yes. the year 2016. Yes. And in note two. Yes. 3.5 is mm. paid year ending 2016. Note one says an mm. ordinary dividend of 3.63 has just been paid. Yes. Now, yes. Yeah, that is what I don't understand. Ah, that's what you don't understand. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Okay. Let me clarify on that. <clears throat> now, in this example, okay. Now, uh, just to uh, the, your examiner, okay, actually copy this question from your counterpart ACC. Okay. Uh, I'll show this question in the next class. Okay. Uh, so as. Okay, Sorry, as the examiner was copying from the ACCA, uh, they did forget some things along the way. Okay, and one of them is uh, what uh, Luke uh, or Amor is saying to tell us. Okay, and that here you can see that the accounts given to us are as of that first of October 2016. In reality, if you go to note one, okay, uh, you understand that actually it cannot be for 2016. The accounts cannot be for 2016. Why? Because in note one, the company has paid a dividend of 6.36, and in note two. The dividend for 2016 is 3.5. Okay, as you can see, uh, the information there seem to have issues. Okay, uh, they, they don't tally as per se. Okay, uh, so your examiner, as he was copying from the question from the, uh, the financial manager for SCA, they forgot to make an adjustment, the necessary adjustment. Okay, that's just to highlight on that particular matter. Okay, that here there was a okay, more or less, uh, I don't know what can I call it, it's not a type as per se, but essentially, uh, they forgot to make the necessary adjustment to the question, and one of them was on the year. Okay, there's no the accounts can be for 2016. Okay, and in note one, the company has paid a dividend of 3.63, and in note two, with the 2016 dividend is 3.5. Okay, it does not make any, uh, any sense out of it. Okay, so the accounts cannot be for 2017. Okay, okay. So I know the question because of uh, it's from the SCA part. Okay, so your examiner made some few mistakes uh, when uh, drafting the question. Okay, I hope I've answered that. Uh, 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 look, okay, I hope I've answered that. So wait, look, look, I hope I've answered that question. He has gone away. Look, I'm trying to see whether uh, the question is, has been answered. Hey, where is he? Okay. So, anyway, oh, that's all on that note. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, so back to the cost of the share. So, you have, you have obtained the preferred uh, dividend the company is paying. Okay. Next is to get the market value of the company per shares. In note three, okay, the company present shares uh, have an ex dividend market value of 40 cents. That is from note three. Okay. P not is equal to 40 cents. So, P not is equal to 40 cents, okay, yeah, 40 cents. Therefore, the market value, or the, or the cost of the previous share is be 4 cents, okay, divide by 40 cents, and we expect this as a percent, to give us therefore 10% with the cost of our private shares, okay, the cost of private shares, okay. Yeah, Maureen, I think, you, okay, you can do that, okay. So I'll upload the notes alone for, for your sake. Okay, and that's how you get the cost of present share. Okay, the cost of present share. Okay, having done that, next is to get the cost of the debenture of the bond. Here we have okay, so uh, so C, okay, cost of bond. 
and this bond in between that it is gained mature in six years time therefore n is equal to six years it is paid interest at ten percent all this is from the company uh, financial statement okay therefore the interest the company is paying is equal to ten percent the nominal value of this bond you've been told in note four in note four you've been told that the nominal value of the bond is 100 do we pay tax yes we do in note six the tax is that percent therefore the net is income will be 30 percent less okay therefore that give therefore 4.9 okay to give us 4.9 then in note four we do need to get the current market value of the debentures of this bond in note four the market value p note you'll be told is equal to 104 so shillings 104.5 okay uh, then you'll be told that the bonds can be redeemed the redemption value the redemption value of this bond in between it's five percent premium therefore one of five percent times the nominal value which is equal to 100 you have to give therefore a redemption value of one of five shillings okay i think you have all the variables we need in order to get the cost of this bond okay i want to go to our next board here okay <coughs> We have the, uh, the number of years redemption, six years, the interest four by nine, uh, P note 104, and we have the redemption value at 105. Okay. So if the bond, okay, just to what I've been telling you that essentially what would be the cost of this bond if it was to be irredeemable? Okay, it would be equal to the interest, which you got 4.9. We divide market value, which is 104.5, and we express this as a percent. Okay. As I mentioned, don't forget, you don't need to do this. Okay, but this is just to uh, ensure that you reduce your number of trials. Okay, so it can make your work a bit easier. Okay, so you don't do this in your final answer. Okay, but just to uh, ensure that you do uh, get, you know where that your answer should be. Okay, you get four points. Okay, and we get 4.68. We get 4.68 percent to be the cost of the, the same bond if it was to be redeemable. Okay, therefore the cost of this bond now, okay, since it is redeemable, ought not to be too far apart from the 4.68 percent. Okay, uh, therefore we can just start discounting at, for example, 5 percent. Okay, then we can see therefore at 5 percent, <clears throat> what do we get? We got negative one of 4.5, the market value of the bond plus the interest you get which is 4.9 times present value added factor okay uh five years okay uh what's percent five percent no six years the conversion occurs in redemption occurs in six years sorry about that so six years not five years okay six years five percent plus the redemption value you will see is one of five times present value interest factor okay six years five percent what do you get if you have discount those cash flows at five percent okay lois has done it we get negative one point two seven eight okay someone confirm the answer <clears throat> okay negative one point two eight that is from lois okay when from us mother the same thing okay so fair enough i think we can therefore assume that that should be the correct okay but five percent what if we discount the same cash flows okay but at let's say four percent okay i want to reduce my discount rate okay at four percent okay and it'll be equal to negative one of 4.5 okay plus 4.9 times present over time factor okay six five percent Plus one of five. Sorry, we're using, we're using four percent. Sorry, we're using four percent. Okay, we're using uh, four percent, not five percent. Okay, four percent. Okay, four percent. One of five times present value infrastructure. Okay, six years, four percent. And what do you get if we discount the same cash flows, but now at four percent? Okay, we have an answer already from S and Vice that is equal to as a customer four point. 
shillings okay the insurance okay uh, 4.17 shillings okay positive therefore you can say for uh, our discount rate uh, the cost of this bond okay ought to be between uh, four and uh, between four and five therefore using the uh, using the IR formula the cost of debt will be equal to okay four percent one percent the difference between five and four okay the value at four percent four point one seven 4.17 minus minus 1.28 okay and that's therefore give therefore what ought to be therefore the cost of this bond okay and how do you get four point okay uh from stacy we get 4.76 okay 4.77 uh 4.6 okay And that's how we get the cost of this bond. Okay, we get four point seven seven. Okay, seven seven. Okay, <clears throat> that's we get the cost of the bond. Okay, now having done that, what we do next is to get the cost of our last finance uh, capital source. Uh, in this case, this is a bank loan. Okay, so uh, D. Okay, is cost of bank loan. I hope it's really clear on how to get the cost of the bond. Okay, don't forget this the use of simply the use of trial and error method. Okay, the cost of bank loan. Okay, now this bank loan as per note five. Okay, uh, you'll be told that the bank loan has a valuable interest rate that has averaged four percent per year in the recent year. Okay, I hope you should remember how you get the cost of a bank loan that pays variable. Okay, and we say you can use three ways. Okay, one you can use its passage rate. Another way you can use a similar uh, uh, debt instrument the company has. For example, this company has a bond, okay, uh, whose cost was 4.77 percent. Okay, so if, for example, you're not being told the past, okay, of this bank loan, okay, as per note five, then you could have assumed the cost of the, the cost of the loan to be 4.77 percent. But since you be given the past history of this uh, bank loan, which is 4 percent per year, then you're going to be using it, okay. You're going to have to be using that as the cost of this bank loan. Okay, it will be equal to four percent. But don't forget the interest is before tax. Therefore, uh, the net cost of the company is seventy percent. Therefore, times the tax, and this gives therefore a cost equal to uh, two point eight percent. Okay, gives the cost of two point eight percent. Okay, that's on step number two. Okay, getting the cost from each of the individual uh, capital sales. Okay. Now, having done that, what next is now to get the market values, to get the market weights. Okay, having obtained uh, the cost from each finance source, uh, the next is to get the market weight from each of those sources. Okay, so step three is to get the market values. The market values. Okay, so we have equity, we get the market value of equity. Going back to the company, uh, to this company, uh, SFP. Okay. Uh, the total nominal value of the share is 800 million. Okay, one private share has a nominal value of five, therefore divide by five to give therefore the total number of equity shares issued. We multiply by the market value per uh, equity share in note one. The market value is 47. Okay, that give therefore what is going to be the total uh, market value of the company equity shares. This company also has private share. Okay, so the company also has private share. So we get the market value of the company private shares. Okay. Uh, as per the SFP, the total nominal value of the company present share is 600 million. One share has a power value of one. So we divide by one, simply get uh, that to give us a number of shares. We multiply by the market value per preference share. In note three, the market value per preference share is 0 0.4, 40 cents. Next, we get the market value of bonds. In uh, going back to the extract of the SFP, uh, the bonds have a total nominal value of 60 of 600 million. Therefore, 600 million, we divide by the power value per bond, which is 100. We multiply by the market value per bond, which is 104.5. That is from note 4. Okay. We have multiplied by 1.045. Okay. That gives us what's going to be the total market value of the company bonds. Okay. I mean that, that next we get the bank loan okay look this is a bank loan so bank loan they don't have a market value so what do you do you're going to use therefore their book values 
for loans cannot tradable. Okay, therefore, again, be using therefore their bank loans. You can be using therefore their book values. In this case, therefore, the book value of the bank loan is 200 million. Therefore, no calculation required here. We use a 200 million. Okay. And that's how you get, you get there for uh, what should be okay. What should be the uh, uh, the mark of the book value of the mark of the loan? Okay. Yeah, what's the market value of the equity? For permanent share, I think we get to forty million. Okay, that one is easy to calculate. Okay. Equity market value. Okay, we have an answer here. The equity market value we get seven, seven, seven million, seven billion, uh, five twenty million. Okay, uh, okay, thank you. Then the market value of bonds, six hundred <coughs> bonds market value. Okay, you got an answer. We get uh, six point seven million, six point seven million. Okay, therefore, from those four finances, okay, from equity or the flow to bank loans, what the total market value? Okay, just try this. Don't forget, I was saying regarding the bank, the uh, the bank loan, the bank loan. Okay, they don't have the market value, so you're going to use there for the book value. Okay, and what do you get? <clears throat> Okay, we're not say here. Uh, we get eight a billion. Okay, uh, five eighty-seven. Okay, million to be the total market value from all those four finance sources. Having done that, we simply go therefore to the final step. Okay, that is trying to determine therefore what should be uh, the cost of for the the cost of capital for the entire company. Therefore, with an average cost of capital, it will be equal to. The market value of equity, which is seven million five twenty million, times the cost of equity. Okay, so going back to our working, the cost of equity we obtained twelve point one eight here. Okay, we obtained uh, twelve point one four percent. Okay, therefore uh, we go here, multiply by twelve point okay one four percent plus. The market value of present share we got to 40 million, therefore to 40 million times the cost of present share. So going back to working, the cost of present share we got 10 percent. We have it here. We got 10 percent. Okay, so times uh, 10 percent plus the market value of bonds we got 627 million times the cost of bonds. Going back to our previous working, the cost of bonds we got 4. Point uh, seven seven percent. Okay, therefore times four point seven seven percent plus the market value of notes. Okay, or bank loan. So simply the book value, two hundred million times the cost of the uh, bank loan, and which we got two point eight percent. Therefore times uh, two point eight percent. We divide the total market value from those finances, eight billion uh, five eighty seven million. And that's the, therefore given therefore uh, what ought to be the cost of the bank uh, the cost of capital for the entire capital. Okay, from Naomi as well as from Lois, that eleven point three two percent. Okay, confirm confirm eleven point three two percent. Okay, and we get yes from Kami has confirmed uh, to be 11.32 percent, and that's how we get a cost of capital uh, for the entire company. Okay, I hope that is very clear to all of you. Okay, now we can't do an assignment, but however, uh, we shall touch from next week. Okay, ensure that your e-learning is working properly. Okay, ensure e-learning is working properly uh, because. I